So, hello, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to my talk, DevSecOps, and more specifically, about AppSec in the Devs, DevOps world. A bit of, about me, um, my name is Bal Khofesh. I'm uh, the CTO of uh, Neuroligion, father of two, uh, DevSecOps enthusiast, and of course, lover of open source, like everyone here, right? Hardcore Linux users, this presentation is brought to you by Arch Linux. Um, Cybersecurity researcher for around 15 years or a bit more, developers for six years, in IT for eight years, and DevOps for three years and a bit. Now, for us to really go into what DevSecOps is all about, we need to understand what was before, um, or the before times of uh, security. Just like in DevOps and development in general, we have the waterfall. The waterfall in security was a bit more problematic than the uh, idea in development, because if you just release you know, slower, it means that your product just go around a bit slower. People wait a bit more for new releases. But if we release slower and we produce security patches slower, then it means that you can wait something like four months, half a year, for a critical security issue. We all remember the great days of Photoshop and Adobe in general, which, I don't know, had the release of their suit of products once every two, three, four years. And in each of those, there was around 100 security issues every time. We're not even talking about Flash, okay? <laughs> Just talking about the um, other uh, suits. So we understand that there is a big issue with doing waterfall and security. We also had the problem of the endless uh, penetration testing cycles. The penetration testing cycles are a bit of an interesting because what it means is that we produce uh, some kind of a software. Now we want to make sure that before we hit production, our software or product is secure. Makes sense. So what we do, we ask an external company or our own uh, security team to come and evaluate what we did. All right, so this cycle usually takes something around uh, a week for a standard piece of software. And after this week, we're done, right? Not so much. We get back uh, 300 pages of PDF full of reject screenshots and usually information that our developers can't actually work with. All right, we managed to fix everything. We're ready to go, right? Not yet. Now that we fixed everything, we still need to verify that everything actually has been fixed. So we go back to the security team and ask them, all right, can you verify, please? Another week. Now, we are already waited almost a month between fixes, retesting, verification, and going again and again until this process is finished. And that usually takes a lot of time. The upside, security is in sync with development at that point in time. Development is slow, security is slow, but that's okay, right? Because in the end, our goal in security was to not release uh, vulnerable software out there in the wild. So, all good, I guess. Yeah, and then DevOps happened. <laughs> DevOps pretty much mean that security found itself in a very complicated position. Instead of uh, the usual, um, usual pace of having, a, I don't know, a once every two weeks uh, to do the pity, now they found themselves in the following scenario. We have a build uh, every two to three minutes, right? That's, that's around uh, usual in our days. And let's say I have the best um, penetration testing team in the world. They really are the best. I pump them full of caffeine and sugar and tell them, listen, we're going to do this as fast as we can, 24 hours, end-to-end -end testing of the entire application. All right, we sit, hack, 
find and go back with the PDF to the uh, development team leader, everyone is happy. Then the development team leader go, he looks at that and he say, yeah, well, we don't use that anymore, we don't use that anymore, we change that totally, and nothing here actually is still relevant to us. Why? Because in 24 hours, if we divide that in two minutes, we are actually 720 builds past the point where we actually tested. So it's not that we test the old version or we tested um, even 100 builds in the past. We're testing ancient history. Everything could change in 720 builds. We're not even testing the same OS. Ubuntu could just create a new OS, like <laughs> mid-testing. And that means if it's not humanly possible to do this manual testing process, and it means that we can't follow up with uh, the pace of development, we have vulnerabilities in production, which is something that no one wants, right? Someone wants vulnerabilities in production? Very nice. All right, so no one actually wants vulnerabilities in production, of course. <laughs> and that means that we have a problem. I know, let's just hire more people, right? That's always the best solution. So the security team leaders um, decided that let's take this team a little bit to the upscale. Let's try to inject more people in. So they go to the CEO and the CISO or security team leader says, listen, for us to manage security here, we need at least 99 people just to you know, add to the one security guy. And the CEO takes his charts of uh, organization information and says, all right, developers make money. Security, yeah, you make us lose lots of money. We're not going to hire so many security personnel just for 100 developers, right? We're looking at something like a standard SMB. Even if we scale this problem up and we say we have 100 security people, we have 1,000 ops personnel, 10,000 developers, like a very nicely sized uh, organization, this problem just consists because we still have a minority of security people. We just can't scale that. And no company can hold more security people than ops or devs. Just doesn't work like that. What do we do? So security understood that there is a problem. And it understood that it's just running after the amazing things that DevOps does and try to clean that up. But it didn't work. Instead, security needs to do um, some kind of a mental change to embrace DevOps, to learn how to sprint uh, in the speed that DevOps does and development changed. And to do that, we needed to start sharing security with the DevOps. Now, when we share security with DevOps, it means that everyone is happy, you see? Everyone is happy. We uh, allow DevOps to take some of the responsibility for security. We allow them to try and put some of our, the automated tools inside the pipeline. And all in all, we get a little bit of help because there are more ops than security. Makes sense. Now, when we're talking about security, um, what exactly is this security we decided to share? Because security is pretty much a big, big topic. There's lots of things in security, from ensuring that your space shuttle doesn't get hacked into uh, making sure that when you have your driveway gate, no one gets in, right? Security is pretty broad. But when we're talking about DevOps, we usually means we're talking about developers, and that means we're talking about product producing companies, which means we produce code, we sell that code in some kind of way, either as a SaaS, as an on-prem, but we have some kind of a product. And when we have a product, we basically have application. And that means we need to do application security testing. Does anyone here ever heard about AppSec? What AppSec is? All right. AppSec means uh, doing the security 
specifically for the application. It has many implications, but in the end, it means we're not looking at internal organization structures. We're not looking at uh, make sure that users in the Active Directory have six uh, characters in their password or that uh, emails are not uh, being sent to the wrong people. We're talking about securing the product that we sell. That's OPSEC. Now, why should we care about OPSEC? How, how OPSEC is even relevant for us? Is it like a big issue? So the Verizon 2018 data breach investigation report um, concluded that web applications, specifically web applications, are accounted for more than 70% of the data breaches worldwide globally. Now, that's a pretty big number if you think about it. Now, the second one is backdoors. If you think about what backdoor is, it's just a disgruntled uh, employee or someone else that creates um, a vulnerability specially created inside the same thing that you build. So it's part of the application, which means most of security problems are indeed coming from the application. Does anyone know OWASP? Nice, very nice, very nice, amazing. Anyone knows what DevSlap is? Less so. All right, so OWASP is the Open Web Application Security, security Project. I would suggest everyone here to um, go afterwards, go home, and Google that. It's a very, very good uh, free organization that wants to uh, open the idea of security to as many people as possible. It's a charity or nonprofit organization, and they're very, very good. One of their more interesting projects, a very new project, is the DevSlap. DevSlap is uh, a lab and also uh, YouTube videos and some uh, written material about how to create a secured pipe. Very, very interesting. You should really check it out. There's lots of uh, interesting examples there. So, all right, we know that uh, AppSec is a problem and application security is a problem. What is an application? So when you think about it, almost everything that we do is application related. Does your company do blockchain, right? It's application. The blockchain technology network, even the uh, exchanges themselves, it's all based on applications. We're talking about smart houses, smart cities, application. We're talking about connected cars or IoT. Again, applications. It doesn't even matter how we call that. Everything is applications, and every piece of software that in the end gets a user input at some point is vulnerable or might be vulnerable. That's an attack surface. All right, interesting. Now, we understand that DevOps is our great savior because uh, having them embrace uh, security, but more specifically, AppSec, can give us great things. But let, let's talk a bit about what exactly does that help us with. So as you can see, DevOps and AppSec equals love because it really works great together. We have security in the SDLC. That's great. We don't want security in production because if we're getting security only when we hit production, that's most likely already too late. It means that there is now a vulnerable code or potentially vulnerable code that sits out there and everybody can access that. Again, something we don't want. Quicker cycles means quicker fixes, right? If we can make sure that um, the shift left idea uh, applies to security and that we can enjoy the speed that DevOps bring us, it means that we can find those problems faster and it saves us money and it makes the process quicker. Win-win. We also have automation, which means that, uh, remember this uh, amazing uh, penetration testing team that I have, that they're now doing a caffeine withdrawal? So those uh, people are, can now mostly be replaced or enhanced by automation. 
we can use automated tools to do most of the uh, low hanging fruits and testing that up to now we needed the full pen testing team to do. Now, I don't uh, say replace all the security people because we still need um, security experts to analyze high level um, policies and to understand what might need those tools and where, but most of the work can be automated. And again, that goes back to security in the SDLC. If we can automate, we can put it in the CICD. The last thing is, of course, finding issues early on. We all know the shift left theory, and we all heard it a thousand times, but it's true. If we find those issues early, it means that um, it costs us less. And again, we don't want to find those things in production. It's not just cost effective. It's, it can be anything between saving people's money to saving people's lives. Depends on what application you're actually doing. Let's look at the classic DevSecOps paradigm. So everybody knows this nice thing. We have it uh, with a little car going outside. Um, everybody pretty much knows about it. Now let's see where we can put security in this process. First of all, let's talk a bit about what's inside AppSec. We have the Static Application Security Testing, or SAS which means testing code for vulnerabilities. Uh, scanning the code, see if the developers didn't do something reckless, if there isn't some kind of pointer that doesn't get uh, released, or buffer overflows that might happen. So we take that and put it in the code. We have hope open source verification, which everybody here heard about, I'm sure. This whole conference is almost about it. Um, testing that uh, are open source uh, op open source components are secured, up secured updates and do not have any kind of known publicly available issues and vulnerabilities in them, right? It's important and most of our product is made out of open source. I'm sure no one here uh, needed to actually write the HTTP server that they're using from scratch. So we have open source verification, which usually goes into the build part. And we have the security training for devs. Um, security training, pretty simple. Just tell developers, listen. Right here, you take the user input. Please, please, don't just put that in the query for the database. Please sanitize it first, or at least filter some things. Keep security in your mind when you create the code. Simple, but very effective. Now, in the CICD itself, even though that code is in the CICD, but more specifically where we start packing things up, we still have uh, interesting things to do. One of that is environment security and updates. We want to make sure that we take, uh, let's say, uh, Ubuntu latest, or at least Ubuntu something, which is um, much more secure than taking some random uh, repository and building from that, right? We want to make sure that our components are maintained, that they're in the latest version, and again, that there aren't any kind of security issues known and open for them. We have the post build, which is dynamic application security testing, or DUST. Um, some of you might know it as web security scanners or just security scanners in general. Um, automated tools that are aimed to test the running application and produce vulnerabilities or find vulnerabilities that might be there. The nice thing here is like um, SAST, it's not looking for known vulnerabilities, but it's looking for vulnerabilities that are actually uh, in, the, in the solution. So even if you created a new product, which no one knows about, it can still find problems and vulnerabilities, even though none uh, public problems have been published. We have vulnerability assessment, which is very similar to open source verification, but it means testing the components which are, might not be open source. So not just um, going to the repositories and see if uh, there are some kind of CVEs open, but more specifically, have a database of all the CVEs out there. And if you're using Oracle database in that and that version, then make sure that there aren't outstanding vulnerabilities. If you're using Windows in some kind of build, 
I don't know who will use that, but okay. If someone uses Windows, then make sure that it's updated and that we don't have any running uh, problems there. Pretty straightforward and again, very effective. Penetration testing. Now, we want to avoid that because it's manual, but sometimes we can't, um, specifically when policies and compliance are in the way. And uh, those of us who are from the financial or fintech world know about it uh, quite well. Sometimes you have to have this specific penetration testing company that has been certified by everyone to make sure that your solution is secure. Or, all right, we can do that. Let's try to avoid it because it's manual. We never want manual things to happen while, while we do our uh, CICD. Some things that we do work as intended, mostly. Those things are, of course, the open source verification. There isn't too much to do there. There are components. There are vulnerabilities, public disclosed vulnerabilities. We just combine the two, and we can help the developers and the uh, DevOps team to make sure that there aren't any vulnerable components. Straightforward, works great. There isn't much to do there otherwise. Security training, very straightforward because you just take the developers, put in their, inside their head, think about security. Don't just develop randomly. Keep in mind that people are using that and their data might leak out. We have the environment security and updates. Make sure that your, uh, the components that power your application are up to date on the latest version and does not have any kind of upstanding problems. All right? And we have vulnerability assessment, which again, it's almost the same as the open source ver verification, but uh, for proprietary uh, programs or solutions as well. And we have our penetration testing, our uh, good old trusted uh, penetration testing, which means, all right, there is a good team, they know what they do, and they do it well. Now, there are some things or some approaches that doesn't work right or did not really uh, thought about in regards to the DevOps world or our current way of doing things. Those are um, sadly the pillars of AST. And those approaches, uh, also, although they have some pros, have lots of cons. So let's think about it. We have the SAST, uh, which uh, most of its users are the developers. That's the static application security testing. Now, uh, you use it when you do the coding. The cons, of course, are first of all, we have early detection. That's great. Uh, we know exactly that when the developer produces the code, we get as early as it can be or as left as we can. Uh, we can find those issues. But there are also cons here. First of all, when you only look at the code, we have the problem that we're blind to the full picture. We look at the code and we say, all right, this piece of software work, great. But when we combine multiple parts or microservices, we don't know if the interactions of those microservices between one another are actually working as intended and are secured as we wish them to be. We have Dust, which is the dynamic application security testing mostly used by security, and that's a problem, by the way. It's used in the testing and staging environment. The pros are, of course, that we have full view, but the problem is that it's um, more to the right than we would want it to be. It needs a live target. We need something that actually functions and responds to run it effectively. We have the IAS. Now, the IAST is a very interesting concept. Uh, it was brought um, just be before the DevOps revolution, and it was supposed to be the best of both worlds, to give you both the understanding of what's happening in the code, but also what's happening in the running software. Makes sense? Sounds great. The problem is that it also brings you the worst of both worlds, because it, first of all, you now need a running application, you need something that it instruments in order to do the tests. 
And also you have the problem that you need to understand the code, which means every IS out there will need to actually understand every programming language there is. Otherwise, it just can't work. And because we need instrumentation to run IAS, it means that also this program will need to support instrumentation in some kind of way. Not all programs can do that, uh, programming language, sorry. Now, what I see uh, in regard to the future of Dev, uh, DevSecOps, or the future of AppSec in DevSecOps, we're talking of, about uh, developer-centric, first of all, developer-centric everything. We want to make sure that developers and DevOps people can run the solutions, whatever they will be, as soon as they can. And we don't want security to manage the process. We want you to do that. Because when you do it, when you, the DevOps people, the developers, when you do it, you own the process and you take the responsibility. As a, uh, as a developer, the, the same way I don't want to produce a software with bugs, I don't want to produce a software with security vulnerabilities. It should be the same for me. And that's the idea of giving the security away. Still manage it from somewhere here, just regarding policies and what makes sense for the organization, but also to actually give them the developers or the DevOps, the ability to use the software and not to see some kind of weird messages about SSL this or XSS that, but actually give a more specific understanding. So AppSec in the hands of developers, that's one, a very big, uh, a very big part of it. We're talking about auto-generating security-oriented unit testing. Think about that. Instead of waiting for your application to actually be alive, if we could do the same thing that the Dust is doing, but in the unit testing world or unit uh, integration testing, we will have the ability to get everything we, we get from uh, SUST, as in being early on, with the ability to actually test end-to-end -end, uh, in a Dust-like manner. That's the best way to do that. Of course, we want full CI-CD automation. If we can uh, make sure that our tool or AST solution can actually fully integrate into this process, not just by uh, providing some kind of a REST API and yeah, just write five uh, lines Python and that, that will be okay, but actually in every marketplace, in every plugin, you, you use Jenkins, all right, just click on this, edit. You have, you use uh, Azure DevOps, cool. Just click here and edit. We want to, to do it as fast as we can. Immediate feedback of detected issues and of course, fast remediation. We want to make sure we find everything as fast as possible and we want everyone to be aware of that uh, in the fastest way we can. Again, Shift left, at least the idea of it. And of course, the last thing is uh, actionable results. Give developers only what they need to solve the problem, no noise. Lots of security products were created for security people and not for developers. You can see that by the amount of reports that they're producing. And more specifically in that most of, uh, most of the feedback is aimed at security people, multiple alerts. Who knows what, what, is, what is it about? We need to make sure that everyone can understand what they're seeing. Thank you, everyone. And uh, please, questions. So regarding the penetration, the thing, obviously you don't want to have teams that doing it all the time. Do you think that the automatic uh, tool that we have is enough as, as a first response for the day, day to day, you know, major release and uh, pen test of obviously professional would be enough? I believe that currently, uh, in the state that penetration testing companies and teams are operating, most of what they're doing is just running the same tools that you will run inside a CI CD process. Most of those people uh, might be skilled, but in the end, because they have this amount of work before them, they have to automate. And when they automate, they're practically doing what you will be doing. 
Now you will do it smarter because you actually do it inside the CI CD process and not just outside of it. Thank you, everyone.